So, what is what is your approach uh, to to the work when you come to it? In terms of how, what's your what's your process as an actor? Uh, well, I think the you know if you tell the story, you got to figure out what the story is and what part, what your part in telling the story is, uh, and the figure out what the style is. Do you have one process that you use for each part that you play? The one mindset that you said you try to tell the story. Yeah, I think you know you're. I mean, it, <clears throat> we're all we're all storytellers, and and, and my, your job as an actor is to tell that particular story. You know, so there's the old cliche of of the, um, you know, the the guy who gets who's playing the grave digger in Hamlet, and he, they, he's asked what what's the what's the play about, um, and he says it's about a grave digger who meets a prince. <laughs> you know. Uh, and you, you, you're responsible for your your part of that story. Um, depending on the style of the film you're in, you you you'll employ different techniques, you know, because uh, although you know the the method was developed chiefly for uh, purely because of film acting, and um, uh, it's but it's not always useful in the sense you know what i mean like you can't employ that kind of approach to everything you do if you're if you're playing uh, if you're in a cartoon movie or one of these sort of superhero films or something like that you know there's 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 an element of um uh of sort of uh, grotesqueness that you have to bring to your performances sometimes to fill it to fill up the that whatever these uh, the cartoon characters are so uh it, it you know it depends what the style of film that you're in i think that's a, I would say is a, a a a good argument for going to theatre school the way I did is because they chuck you in so many different types of plays and you realise that you're you, you know you need to learn different styles of acting to pull off the different styles of plays that you're going to be in. That's that's amazing. Hey, do you ever have directors give you line readings? Yeah, I don't mind line readings. Good, you know, I, you know, if. It, uh, if there's something that you they want to you want to hear it done in a certain way, try it. You know, I'm sometimes gonna, it's just quicker just to be given. Just give me the line reading if I really. If I'm not understanding it. Just tell me where the, you want the stress to be because you can get stuck in a pattern and you. Normally that happens is something else is going on and your focus is somewhere else and you don't notice that you've you've gotten into a habit of saying a line in a specific way. That's you interesting. Know? That's really interesting. So you're open to it. Yeah, I mean. Um, you're unique. You're, you know, just try it for a take. If it doesn't work, you'll try something else. You know, so in, and in the end of the day, when you get to the editing room, everything's been rewritten all over again. So it and, can and, be, and we're not there. So, you know, you want to ha- give options for the editing room. I think you're a very giving actor. That's I was always taught that that's if it's a young man's. Uh, it's a beginner's uh, impulse to give you li- give the actors line readings, especially if a young director has written the script or he hears it a certain way. Yeah. And uh, I remember early in my career, I tried that, and uh, two disastrous results. You know, I, my approach is always, but you know, the actor is going to bring something that you can't have thought of. Yes, that's good too. But you I mean, can't I can't have imagined. I, I always think. Uh, you know, the actor gets there and they want to be able to contribute their ideas and you go, yes, of course, but you must also allow other people's ideas to... to absolutely. So, no, absolutely. Uh, and you can't put up a wall. If you, you put up a wall, then it, it becomes very difficult for anybody to become involved with your performance. And, you know, you want to be able to play with the other people. So, Also, the other thing is, any idea that you can get... Uh, from from anybody, if it works, and it it, it makes it makes you look good. So, but not you know. everybody feels the way you do. There's a there. It really is dependent upon the ego strength of the actor. And uh, I say ego I, strength, but uh, I don't mean a big ego. I'm talking about willingness to incorporate others' ideas. A lot of people don't feel that way. Have I told you the four thoughts that go through an actor's mind when they're given direction? I need to hear them. Uh, 
Fuck you. I just did that. I suck. What was that again? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, but you know, so you have a you always you have a level of insecurity all the time. But I mean, you, know, you sort of learn to live with that, and and um, uh, you know, who knows whose idea is going to be the one that works. This wasn't something that you started with when you first started in the business, was it? Did what, you bring those that? Thoughts? Yes. No. They, they they developed over years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the beginning you're desperate to prove yourself, so you're you come up against a lot of resistance then, and um, and you don't know, you know, you 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 don't know, you 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 don't know yourself, so you're you're trying to make a point, which is tedious, isn't it? But you, when you run into that with actors, I think that's what happens, and you're um, but you're as you get more experience. It's the strangest things when you look at it that turn out to be suddenly be effective, you know. Absolutely, and it's mysterious. It is, but it's also magical. I find in a way, there's certain things that happen when with an actor uh, doing a performance and the camera and this film running through the camera and the or correct lighting, the correct angle. Mm. I mean, something can happen that's beyond what you what's in the script. Yeah, it's just really incredible. Yeah. Some guys really, really have that. I don't think that I have that, but um, you know, you can see, uh, you can see that the films that Mel Gibson directs, and he really understands uh, how an actor should use the the camera and the frame, and he directs the actors in, say, Apocalypto, Apocalypto, which I thought was a stunning movie, or in Braveheart, you know. That, but he directs the actors to have these sort of really big movie star moments and where they're completely accessible to the camera. And, um, and it's about, it's about uh, putting your focus or looking in the right part of the frame. Absolutely. So that the camera can read everything. And, um, uh, and some people in, just understand that intuitively, and then other actors, uh, they don't. I mean, Robert Downey is another one who understands it completely. He understands how to uh, 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 give access to the camera. Huh. It's, it's interesting who does and who doesn't. Now, uh, back from the, the old days, the cliche about the stage acting and, and versus movie acting was the size of the performance. Yes. How big are you? Yes. Is that still, is that true? Is well, it still true? You have to hit the back wall when you're in a theater. Right. You know? Um, That's, is that vocal level or is it emoting? What, what is the issue there? Projection? Energy, projection, uh, your, and demonstrating. You know, you have to demonstrate the character. Really? Uh, yeah, on stage. Because you otherwise the first three or four rows get to experience the nuance of your performance. But everyone past those four rows, it doesn't look like you're doing much. And it's, wow. and it's frustrating. Wow, demonstration. Too. Yeah, you have to... Because that's anathema in a movie, right. to demonstrate it. Yeah. Huh. Was that, was that a, a, a style? Well, Brando said that the difference between the two was on stage you have to show the character. Um, and you, have to, you, have to, you, know, you have to demonstrate your thoughts or show, your, show the character. And on, on screen, you just have to think it. Just think it. Yeah. Huh. Not be the character, but just think well, it. Have, yeah, you, you, I mean, literally, just, it's in your mind that you allow, the, you allow the camera to experience the character by giving access to the inner world that you have. Of course, near the end of his career, he couldn't be bothered with learning lines. Yeah. He had them read into a radio mic, and in a in radio receiver in his ear, which he convinced himself, well, that's more realistic. It is. I kind of like it, actually. I've, I, have I you mean, done that? I, I did do it once on Sherlock Holmes because I had to learn um, a, uh, an, a German opera piece very, uh, overnight, practically. And um, to sing it, to, yeah. To, Did you sing? Oh wow! Uh, and uh, I just—it's a song which is difficult. It's in a different language, so in other words, made sense to me. So I had someone feeding me the lines beforehand, uh -huh. and it was a tremendous comfort <laughs> not having to worry about going up. Yeah, absolutely, you know. 
Oh, that, that would dry. be a nightmare. Bring it back oh. to what we were talking about before. Wow. You wouldn't uh, be willing to give us a little uh, song right here. <laughs> I don't remember how it goes. <laughs> Version of I mean, that. I mean, it's also, it was terrible. I, I, I really can't sing. Now on a TV series. You are also, aren't you? I am on a TV show, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's a lot of brutal, brutal work, isn't it? Very long hours, but worth it. I mean, it, the quality is amazing. But, yeah, that's one of those ones where you start shooting on a Monday at 5 o'clock in the morning, and then the end of the week is uh, you finish shooting on a Saturday at about 4 in the morning. Whew. You know, the, the days get pushed. How many pages a day are you shooting? Seven. Seven or eight. Well, that's that's uh, that's a lot of work. That, that's, yeah, it is. One of the things that uh, Kurt Russell and I used to discuss a lot about acting. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering your thought about it. He he thought, uh, given the talent an actor has and preparation, what do you do with yourself when you're not working? The days you have off, or when you have to come in and do a small scene. How do you take care of yourself as an actor? Yeah, that's hard when, you know... I mean, one of the jokes about an actor is as soon as you, uh, an actor gets a part, they look at the shooting schedule to see how many days off they have. Exactly. Um, but you're, uh, it, it's staying in the story is tough when you, when you drop out and you come back, you drop out and you come back, and uh, keeping track of the story. Uh, and that's often harder. Um, uh, to do that, but being on every day is is physically demanding, and it, it's, it's a strain on your stamina. But uh, it's tougher on your concentration. I, and you know, you just you need to just go back and read the script. If you've been away for a while, you get back on and read the script before you show up and get the story back in your head and um, try and get that kind of a, that little imagination going again. But what about your personal life? Does it intrude on your on your work when you're making a film? Um, when I was younger, it did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could t you take more risks with yourself. But now, I, if I know I'm working the next day, then you know it's a school night. So you know, oh, of course, of you wanna, course, you want to be fresh and. I mean, again, there's nothing worse than showing up and not being able to get it. And particularly as we're talking before, now you've only got three shots of getting it, you know, three, three takes. So, you know, you've got to make each one count. So and the first one has to be, you've, you can't be warming up. You know, you have to hit it on the first one, get safety on the second, and then beg for a variation on the third. <laughs> beg. Yeah. <laughs> beg for a variation. Yeah. That wasn't that strict, was I? No, it's that, it, but that's that, that's that's got less to do with it's just to do with time, that isn't it? Yes, it's all about you know? time. Making movies is yeah. time, as time management. I I thought uh, every day though you were ready to go, which just makes my job so much easier. Well, you need to be nowadays. You get less and less time in front of the camera. You know. Uh, what do you mean now? I think the shooting schedules are getting shorter. The ambition of the films are. They get bigger, they have less time to shoot, and you're, you're really, you're, you're getting a couple of takes. So, you, you know, you have to show up ready. Uh, but that's a, the exact reverse of what it should be. It, it is. When you but, have a big ambitious idea or film, then you need to take your time with it. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, uh, 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 probably on, uh, only on studio films, you know, you get to have uh, some Benjamin Button, you know, uh, David would get as many takes as he wanted, and and it was fantastic. I loved it because he never walked away feeling as though there was any idea that hadn't been explored. So that's fabulous for yeah. an actor, isn't it? Yeah, I mean for everyone, and you're never coming back. So I I always feel keep going, do another take. We're never ever going to come back here again. There's and the worst feeling you can have is that night or the next day feeling like there was something that you didn't try because. You were pressed for time, which seems crazy to me because you put this whole thing together and put oh. this, uh, all these people together and, 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 you know, even though the room that you shot in the day before is, might be just down the corridor, you're still not going to go back there. That's correct. Yeah. If you're on schedule, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. 